Every so often, life unfolds in ways more mysterious than fiction. As one group of people in a small Midwestern town discovered in the spring of 1994. Dispatcher Lisa LeBaire was on duty at the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. Central Dispatch, Oakland County. That night we received a call from a nurse at North Oakland Medical Center. Okay, a woman called you and said that uh, her husband was beating her up and threatened to kill the baby. She had received a call from an anonymous caller reporting a disturbance out on Livingston Road in Highland Township. Did she give you any vehicle description? It's a real rural area, so we couldn't think of any pay phones they would be calling from. Okay, we'll send some deputies right out. So right. Bye -bye. we were a little confused as to where the call originated from. 811 and 812 respond to Livingston West of Beaumont, report of a man beating a woman. At 11.34 p.m., two units were dispatched to the area, including Sheriff's Deputy Bill Lizendy. The call that was given to us was real sketchy. General Snarmer started in one direction. I came in the opposite direction. So what we decided to do is sort of meet in the middle and see if we could find where this family fight was. I didn't encounter any vehicles or anybody on the road or anything in between there in Livingston and Beaumont roads. Deputy John Ausnamer approached the area from the east. It was pretty unusual that we were getting a call to a family fight with two intersecting streets. Generally, if it's at two intersecting streets, there would be a pay phone or something around where somebody could make a phone call. I didn't see anything or anybody in the area. About a half mile down Livingston Road is a recreation area. And as I drove by there, I shined the spotlight around. I continued west and finally met up with Deputy Lisenby. He said that he hadn't seen anything coming in from the direction that he did. We have two Beaumonts in Highland Township. We decided that it was possible and more likely that the family fight was at the other Beaumont Road. We went up there, but couldn't find anybody there. Oh, yeah, nothing at the uh, intersection here. We told our dispatch that we couldn't locate anything, and we cleared. Three hours later, around 2.15 a.m., Deputy Lisenby was midway through his shift. Once we answered all our calls and took care of any other police business we had, for some reason I decided to go back there and ride that road one more time. I just had a hunch and I decided to go in a little bit deeper into the more inaccessible parts of the park. As I was retracing my steps, just creeping alongside the road, my headlights picked up on something that was behind a tree. It was white and I couldn't really distinguish what it was. I turned my spotlight on it and I could see that there was something laying on this white object. It looked to me like a baby doll. But when I got up close and I saw a knee move, I realized it was, a, it was a live baby. The skin was exposed other than a little diaper on him. I put him inside my jacket to warm him up. My first concern was if he was real cold to the touch. We needed the, the emergency services brought to the scene as quick as possible. KNHQ 532, Station 16 Highland. Respond to Livingston West of Beaumont, a fallen baby. There you go. The other thoughts that I had was how could anybody leave a baby like this? There you go. It's really just heart-wrenching to, to see that somebody would just abandon a baby like that. When the first rescue rig got there and the first fireman came up and said, I'll take the baby, he started to cry. Yep. He's real cool. I just wanted to 
grab him and pull him back and hold him, just give him another hug. Right over here. Take you over here. He had fire department personnel assist us in the search of the area for her mother or father or, or any other evidence that we could because there was no evidence of who this baby was. There was no tags, no notes, nothing. We couldn't find anything. Fleet Ambulance Paramedic Sean Gillespie and his partner took over the little baby's care. We noticed that there weren't any obvious injuries. Uh, he didn't have any uh, abrasions, lacerations. But we didn't know how long the baby had been out there. And we did notice that he was very cold. And uh, that was our main concern at that point, that the baby could be in hypothermia. All right, Sean, let's wrap it up then. Deputy Lisby was almost immediately attached. Whatever drew him there drew him to that child. And it was obvious that he was very intent on making sure that the baby was taken care of. OK. Take good care of him. I feel that destiny or fate had put everything into motion. But I was just happy that I was there at the right time and at the right moment to find him. At North Oakland Medical Centers, the infant was examined by emergency physician Philip Masterson. Now they found a baby alongside the road is laying out there. I didn't know how old the child was. I didn't know how cold it was. We looked for blueness or discoloration. And the fact that his hands and feet was pink was a good sign for me. It was determined that eight pound, one ounce baby John Doe was no more than a couple of days old. He slowly perked up. To see that this kid was doing okay was a great sense of relief. We enjoyed being with him. Yes. Hey, I'm okay. And it's always hard to see a baby abandoned or injured. And it was, in my opinion, really a miracle that he was found and safe. The Michigan Department of Social Services set out to place the baby in a foster home. Okay, we gotta come up with the first people they called were Bonnie and her husband, Michael. Little B, C. C. When we got the call and realized that this child had been abandoned, we didn't want to bring him home calling him Baby John Doe or Baby Doe. So we had to come up with a name, and it kind of was a family project. Connor! No, you got it. Oh, you got it. Corey! Corey. Yeah. Because we have two other little guys who names happen to begin with an A and a B, that maybe it was time we needed a C. Caleb, Caleb. Mick, do you like Caleb? Eh, it wouldn't be my first pick. We uh, started going through uh, all of the C names that we liked and then started erasing ones that were nephews and friends. Well, well, what do you think of Cody? Cody. Sounds great. And uh, we ended up narrowing it down, and we came up with a Cody. The first time I saw him, he was just so totally tiny and totally alone. I felt a maternal gut instinct. I needed to pick him up and to hold him and to say, things are cool now. Just moving him and starting to pick him up. We set off the heart monitor alarm. The nurses were totally delightful and knew that he needed to be snuggled and hugged as much as I needed to coddle him up, too. Everybody was real helpful because everybody wanted to give this kid what they all thought he needed. I was what he needed. I mean, he just needed a mom. It didn't matter for how long. It was real emotional, but it was real quiet. There was just not too much to say. What a big guy. Yes. It was the easiest, fastest, quickest bonding, almost instantaneous. We're swinging. It's a good swing, okay? Come on, room. In the year and a half that has passed, no one has ever come forward to claim the baby boy. When we first took Cody into our house, the thought of adoption never even occurred to us. We just figured it was going to be eh, for a little while, and then, you know, the parents will turn up. The opportunity presented itself when the parents' rights were terminated. 
there really wasn't much question about it. We were gonna, we were gonna adopt him. He's just a happy little guy, and, and he's just another part of the family. You know, he's just another one of the six. Fits right in. 18-year-old Shannon has been around for all 30 of her family's foster children. I think there was a connection that was different with other foster kids because we were the only family that he's ever known. Cody is definitely something special. One shoe, two shoe. Where's Cody wishing to go? He was meant to be with us, and he's here, so he's not leaving. <laughs> Seven-year-old Alex and Cody have grown very close. Me and him, like, are best buds, because when me and him, like, play together, we always giggle. He never ever did anything mean to me, and I never ever do anything mean to him. Because being a little bro and a big bro means that you can, like, be nice and stuff. Hey, how's it going? I think the biggest hero in this whole story would obviously be Deputy Bill Lisenby. He stops by, see how Cody's doing, and he came to his birthday party and is an adoption party, and he's been a mainstay ever since. He's just like another dad. Here we go. We have a very special relationship. As the time has progressed since I found him, it just seems to be getting stronger and stronger. Yeah, you throw it. Cody has really changed my life. I give you a cup, a big hug. I could never figure out how or why Deputy Bill stumbled across him and found him. And I couldn't narrow it down as to why our home got the phone call to take him, other than this was a master plan from someplace else. Big hug. Nope, big hug. Nope, okay. Oh, 